Hey there, it's Lisa the Survival Mom again, and I am here, not in my bee yard, I'm here in my backyard. Uh, the bees uh, are currently in some hives in a bee yard about 30 minutes north east of us. We're going to be going out there this weekend, um, and I'm hoping to get some video for you when we get out there. Now, um, I am noticing that the swarm trap behind me is has not attracted very much attention from uh, from bee scouts. I expect that to change. We had a really big storm last night, so when I'm done here, I'm going to be adding a little bit more of a um, sort of a, a, uh, a spray that attracts scout bees. And so the scout bees, when they smell this, it's a combination of lemongrass oil, which you can use on its own, or uh, along with two or three other ingredients. Uh, that attracts them to uh, the hive or the, the trap and they can check it out. So these scouting bees, they are part of a wild or feral swarm and so they are out looking around for some place safe for the entire hive including of course the queen. So um, we have a couple of these in our backyard, we'll be putting a couple more out in the bee yard. Um, the majority of these wild swarms do not make it through the winter. They just don't have a space where they can build enough comb and build enough, uh, gather and, and make enough honey for themselves to get through the winter. And then sometimes the weather, weather plays a big part in this. So if a, a winter is unseasonably cold, a springtime arrives, you know, later than usual, they will eat up all their stores. When our very first um, hive died over the winter a couple of years back, the best we could figure out is it was probably, they probably starved over the winter. Um, poor little things. I mean, I would never ever purposely starve any animal, but um, and also might have been varroa mites. And I'll talk on, about varroa mites as a more complex issue. I'll talk more about that in a, an upcoming video. But today, I wanted to just give a report. We haven't trapped any new swarms. We're hoping for that. I also wanted to share what is now my favorite beekeeping book, and it's this one by Les Crowder. He is just, all I can say is he's just an old timer. Um, beekeeper lives now in Central Texas and we were lucky enough to hear him speak uh, a few weeks back at a bee school and his I don't know his uh, his way of thinking about bees and treating bees is very much aligned with our own and so we are doing this not for the honey not for the money that's for sure um, in fact a few videos back, if you go to my YouTube channel, I actually ran, went through a rundown of what we had spent at that point. We have spent more by now, but um, we're not doing it for any of those reasons. We're doing it because we love bees, we're fascinated by them, and as well as just maintaining healthy beehives. So when the wild swarms are out there, they might die because of uh, lack of food. They uh, you know, could get destroyed in a, a swarm, uh, wild animals, all kinds of reasons. But my, uh, m the biggest enemy of the honeybee is varroa mites. And again, our, it could be a combination of varroa mites and then just starving over the winter that um, caused our first hive to die. What I do want to show you really quickly before I get into a couple more reasons to think twice about getting into beekeeping. This is some honey from last season. I have it in this size and this size. And as you can see, um, let me hold it up. You can see that it has crystallized. Honey is one of the most adulterated foods that you will find on the market in grocery stores. And it's just all too easy for a commercial uh, honey business or something coming from overseas to add anything. I mean, uh, high fructose corn syrup. They can add all kinds of additives and not required on the label. So my husband and I were at a hotel a few weeks ago and uh, on the breakfast bar, they had little packets of pure honey. It didn't taste anything like pure honey. By now we know what pure honey tastes like. Uh, the sun is coming and going today, so it's gonna be in and out of the clouds. But um, for sure, I don't know what that was. It was in the packet, but it was not pure honey. Uh, when you buy pure honey, don't be surprised if it is crystallized or crystallizes on your shelf. All you've got to do is just heat up some water and then just set this in the water for several minutes and it'll be good to go again. And it shouldn't recrystallize, you know, maybe for several weeks or longer. Uh, oh, one more interesting thing. This honey was harvested at the beginning of 
uh, last season. In fact, it was, I think we harvested this uh, in the very first week of July. This we harvested when we went out and we found that our hives had more than enough honey to get them through the winter. And so we fe felt comfortable taking a few frames of honey and then harvesting. This has a totally different flavor from this. Uh, the first time I tasted this honey, our late season honey, it had like a malty flavor, malt. You know, so I don't know what kind of flowers are blooming at that time. That is goldenrod season, but I don't know that that was goldenrod. We had a very experienced beekeeper in our part of uh, Texas tell us that uh, where we live in particular, this specific area, he said that has a whole unique flavor of honey. So there you go. But uh, really there is nothing better than just pure honey. You know where it comes from. You know it's not adulterated. So one reason to think twice before getting into beekeeping. Um, one is that your bees can die, like ours did, or they can just disappear in spite of everything you've done. So you can treat them with utmost care, you can spoil them, however you spoil bees, and you may come out one day and find that they have just completely absconded. They may have left honey behind, they may have left brood behind, they are gone. Um, and we have not had that experience, but it can and it does happen to experienced beekeepers. Something else that they can do, and they do this very often, especially in the spring and early summer, they will uh, swarm. So the last time we did an inspection of our hives a few weeks ago, we noticed that one of our hives, we call it the pink hive, we've tried to color, color code our hives so we know what we're talking about when I make notes and my husband and I talk about, well, we wanna, you know, what's going on with the green hive or whatever. But the pink hive had, uh, those bees had begun to create their own queens. And it's some, it is actually pretty incredible, but um, when a hive, begins to think that their queen may be getting old. Maybe she's not laying as well as she should be. Um, the hive is getting overcrowded. The bees may then begin to send a signal that we need a new queen. And so we saw the beginnings of what are called uh, swarm cells or queen cups. And we destroyed them because we did not want that hive to swarm off and leave. So what we did is we added a couple of empty frames in there to make them think that they had swarmed and oh look at all this brand new space that we have to build fresh comb. Um, but they may have swarmed anyway in spite of our, you know, of our best efforts. Um, so the bees can abscond, they just disappear for reasons you may never know. They can swarm off. Um, and then they can just die from any number, of, you know, for all kinds of reasons. One might be the weather, starvation, um, uh, pesticide, you know, they may be picking up pollen from big, large areas that have been sprayed with a uh, particularly um, dangerous pesticide chemical and that can all cause death of your hive. So going back to my first video about reasons to think twice about beekeeping uh, regarding the expense, the expense and then hidden expenses. So you have to ask yourself if you bought a puppy and you paid a lot of money, let's say it's some kind of a designer breed of puppy, all right, we've seen those on social media, they're adorable. Um, would you feel like putting that money out again maybe maybe 10 or 11 months later, a little over a year later, would you feel like buying a new puppy and spending that money all over again? Probably not. So with bees, if you're getting into this, you need to be just extremely well informed, not just do the research. It's not enough just to do research. I love this book and the other beekeeping books I've ha I have, but we are part of a couple of local groups that meet locally. We're part of two or three online Facebook groups, a, for a beekeeping forum. Um, we have a gentleman in town that is a longtime beekeeper and when we come across a situation that we aren't really sure of uh, Because there could be a thousand and one, you know different scenarios We call him and say okay, you know, this is what's happening so uh, if you can get that mentor get those mentoring groups because that will help you each step of the way as you encounter something you've never encountered before. And believe me, that is going to happen. So uh, a reason to think twice is just know that something may happen to your bees, whether they die or they abscond, in spite of your best efforts. Um, another reason is not to expect money. Not to expect money. So this jar of honey, if you were to buy this, let's say uh, we have it like a natural foods 
a uh, couple of them in town and our local grocery store HEB sells uh, locally produced honey. You can expect to pay a dollar or more an ounce including the jar. So this jar we might sell this for 15 to 20 dollars but we're not going to make money. Um, I would have to sell a ton of honey probably just to break even. So we are in this primarily because we're just fascinated by bees. We, we just love everything about them, you know. We learn something new, you know, with every book and with every speaker and class that we take. Um, but we're not into make to make money. If I do sell honey, and I will, um, I would just like to make enough to maybe cover the cost of, you know, one or two of our bee suits. Or, you know, we're going to be needing to buy some new supers in the next two or three weeks. And that's what our bees will be adding honey to. So each super is going to set us back. I don't even know how much. So um, we can build our own supers, but that's going to take some time and my husband's not retired and he's busy. Don't We just don't have time to build our own woodware. So uh, you don't go into it thinking that you're going to make money. So as you're learning and you're researching, maybe watching some of my, my videos, just ask yourself, well, what do, I, what do I want out of this? You know, do I want companionship? Well, <laughs> I can't say that our bees are great companions, although in past years, and I loved this tradition when I first learned about it, um, families would have their beehives, and that was just a part of, you know, their being a homestead or whatever, and uh, they would go out and talk to the bees. And whenever there was a major change in the family, a marriage, a death, a new baby, they would go out and there would be the telling of the bees, and they would tell the bees about this new, because they apparently thought that their bees were just part of the family and they would inform them about this new family member or whatever had happened. So we don't, I don't see my bees as keeping me company like my dog. She's around here somewhere. Um, but so again, we're primarily into it just because we love bees and backyard beekeepers. You know what? Because we are aware of the, uh, the threats to, to honeybees and we know what can go wrong, we are actually doing a, a small part in helping keep honeybees healthy and trying to do our best to do that in a way that is organic, knowing how, you know, what are a lot of measures we can take to deal with, there she goes, to deal with different kinds of pests that can uh, affect the health of a hive. So there you have another couple reasons to, you know, just to think twice about getting into beekeeping. I love it. I just, this, uh, it gets us outside. It's a family experience. All four of us now have experience with tending to our hives and we know what to look for when we go, have to go into the hives. Uh, we're planning on going to a bee, another bee school in uh, another couple of months. There's a huge national bee conference in Tennessee in January. So we are definitely bee, bee, bee geeks, right? Um, but it gets us outside. It's something for the family. It is uh, a part of being self-reliant. So we are growing our own, you know, our, getting our own honey, and we can use the, the wax for, and, the, and the, from the honeycombs and all kinds of things, as well as honey for dozens of medicinal purposes. And so this really does increase our own level of self-reliance, as well as something to pass down to our kids and maybe someday our grandkids. That is all I have to say for now. Thanks for watching this video. Over on my YouTube channel, um, I have maybe another five or ten beekeeping videos that kind of just are more of a beekeeping diary so you can get a lot of training from this book from beekeeping for Dun dummies um, there are tons of bee, bee, bee groups out there I just want to share with you what is going on right here in our house and in our backyard as well as the bee yard I'll be back again and maybe from the bee yard next time and you'll get a close-up view of what we have out there bye